homework 3.3, polynomial division, the factor theorem, the remainder theorem, video 7, homework due Wednesday, May 27th, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. This most likely last video, I may do one more example of it, uh, is associated with questions 14 and 15 on homework 3.3. So this last video is about something called the factor theorem, which is so critical that it's going to be the, 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 uh, the, the core of the next section. Now remember, what we're attempting to do, and I haven't mentioned this since the first video, is we're attempting to find a way to factor larger polynomials that won't factor conveniently by techniques like grouping or GCF. The trick is going to be finding a division problem whose remainder is zero because of the factor theorem. So I'm not going to build it, I'm just going to tell you what it is. Suppose f of x is a polynomial function, so one of the functions we've been looking at. The following are equivalent, and what that means is if one of them is true, then all of them are true, and vice versa. If one of them is false, then all of them are false. Number one, parentheses x minus c is a factor of f of x. Well, if we're going to factor things, we need to find factors. So this is a nice something to have in the three-way equivalency. Statement number two, f of x divided by x minus c has a remainder of zero. That kind of makes sense. Because if you're a factor of something, then when I divide by you, it should divide evenly with that remainder. 8 is a factor of 40, because 40 divided by 5, wait, 8 is a factor of 40, because 40 divided by 8 is exactly 5, with the remainder of 0. So what's the third part of this equivalency? Well, the third part kind of brings in the remainder theorem, which says if you put this number into the function, you get the remainder. But if the remainder is 0, then f of c is equal to 0. Now, I need to introduce a new terminology here. I may have accidentally used it in previous videos. But any time a number goes into a function and come out, comes out as zero, that brings up a definition. x equals a number, we'll say x equals c, is a zero of f of x. So it's a characteristic of a function if f of c is equal to zero. So in other words, a number is a zero of a function if when you put it in, it comes out zero. Real quick example, f of x equals x squared minus 25. What's one number you can put in that comes out zero? Five. Do you know the other? Negative five x equals 5 and x, x equals negative 5 are zeros of f of x. Because if I put 5 in, it comes out 0. If I put in negative 5, it comes out 0. So the third statement is equivalent to saying that x equals c is a 0 of f of x. Or x equals c is a 0 of f of x. So I guess you could call it a four-way equivalency, but really this is just the definition of that. It, something is always equivalent to its definition. That's what makes it its definition. All right, so again, just to let this soak in. If you have one of these, you have all of them. If a number comes in and goes, if a number goes in and comes out zero, that means that x minus that number is a factor, which also means that the function divided by x minus that number has a remainder of zero. The important thing is to locate a factor. Because if you have a factor, you know it divides evenly. And when you answer that division problem, it gives you what's called its cofactor. So let me show you how all this plays out, but I'm gonna write the three things that are equivalent. In math, the acronym TFAE, especially in upper level math, is actually quite common. It's short for the following are equivalent. There's one class I teach called linear algebra. We have a theorem. 
It's called the Invertible Matrix Theorem. And it says the following are equivalent. And then it rattles off about 20 things. <laughs> Not at once, it's a slow building process throughout the whole semester. Luckily, we only have three things that are equivalent. So let me just summarize them over here. X minus C is a factor of f of x to f of x divided by x minus c has remainder 0, and 3, f of c is equal to 0. So if we get one of those, we get all three of them. So how can we take advantage of that? Well, in our quest to solve, to find x-intercepts for all polynomial functions, we got to be able to divide them. So if we can find the thing equal to zero, then that gives us a factor and we can divide to find the other factor. So for example, let's suppose f of x is equal to x to the third. I've got it written over there somewhere. I had it written. I've got it printed. Plus 2x to the second minus 5x minus 6 equals zero. I'm sorry, no equals zero. Suppose f of x equals that function. If f of, what's the number I want to put in? Two. Actually, let me write the same way that it's phrased. If x equals two is a zero of f of x, which means if we put in two, it will come out zero. We can check that real quick, but I'm telling you it does. 2 here gives 8, 2 here gives 8, 8 and 8 is 16. 2 here gives negative 10, 16 minus 10 is 6, minus 6 is 0. If x equals 2 is a 0 of f of x, find all zeros of f of x. In, in other words, what we're being asked to do is to solve f of x is equal to 0, because that's how you find x-intercepts. But how can this hint about x equal 2 being a 0 help us? Well, if we're going to solve this equal to 0, we need to factor it. In order to factor it, we need to find two things that multiply to equal that. So here's the flow. Since f of 2 equals 0, because 2 is a 0 of the functions, we can use this equivalency. And by the factor theorem, x minus this number is a factor. And by the way, if this number were negative, when it goes in here, it would become x plus a number. But since two, f of 2 is equal to 0, then by the factor theorem, x minus 2 is a factor. factor of f of x, but it even tells us more. This division problem whose remainder is 0 will be the other factor, and f of x divided by x minus 2 is the other factor. So hooray, thank you for giving me enough information to know one factor and a technique for finding the other factor. So let's do the division problem to find the other factor of the function. To do this synthetic division problem, we have to first set up the box. What number would go in the box? The opposite of this number. You know, this poor two, it has a sign identity crisis. I'm positive. I'm negative. I'm positive. But there's, a, there's an easy rule of thumb to know when to change the sign and when not to. You'll hear this a lot more in the next series of videos. But when you're going from zeros to factors to box numbers, the rule for changing the sign is if the number moves in or out of the factor, change its sign. When it went here, it changed its sign. When it went here, it changed its sign. But if the number is not going in or out of the factor, you don't change its sign. If I move this number directly into here without going through the factor, it doesn't change its sign. Again, I'll say that a lot more in the next series of videos, but when it comes to zeros, factors, and box numbers, zeros, 
factors and box numbers. The rule is if a number goes in or out of the factor, change its sign. But if the number does not go into or out of the factor, do not change its sign. More on that later. All right, so what's the top row? It's the coefficients of the dividend, which are the coefficients of the function. So 1, 2, negative 5, and negative 6. Now, I already know it's going to show up here. Part 2 of the equivalency says the remainder should be 0. It will be, and if it's not, then something went wrong. Okay, box number is times 2. Keep that in mind. Add times 2. Add times 2. Add times 2. Add. Hooray, we got a remainder of 0, but we were expecting that. So, what does this mean in terms of trying to find all the zeros of the function? Remember, we're trying to solve the function equal to 0. We're trying to solve x to the third power plus 2x to the second power minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. But in order to do that, we need to be able to factor it. Well, guess what? We found two factors. One is the one that we divided by. Thank you, factor theorem. We divided by x minus 2, so that's one factor. The other is the answer to the division problem. So what polynomial do these three numbers represent? Remember, synthetic division knocks the degree down by 1. It was a third degree polynomial, so this represents a second degree polynomial. This one represents 1x to the second. This 4 represents plus 4x to the first. This 3 represents plus 3, and we're factored. So a synthetic division problem whose remainder is 0 is what we will be looking for, because what we divided by is one factor, and the quotient is the other. Now, we haven't finished the problem yet. We just got it factored. At this point, we could finish it by putting this equal to 0. That's easy and putting this equal to zero, but it's a quadratic equation, so you could get out the quadratic formula, or you can try to factor it. And I'm pretty sure this factors. Do you know two numbers that add to give four and multiply to give three? How about x plus three and x plus one? And now we can set each factor equal to zero, or not, you can just jump right to the end, as long as you remember how to get from here to here. And it looks like all of our zeros are 2, negative 3, negative 1. Let me see how long this video was. I'm tempted to do one more video with one more example. Ah, this one was pretty long. I tell you what, if you want another example, just let me know and I'll create a video just for you. But let me recap what just happened here because it's critical to what's going to happen in the next video, next series of videos. But there's a problem with this, and I'll tell you what it is in a second. If you're finding the zeros of a function, or you're being asked to find them, and I tell you what one of them is, that one of them can be built into one of your factors by changing the sign and sticking it after an x. The division problem can give you the other factor. So as long as you have an initial zero, you can set up the division problem, get the other factor, and then proceed. But there's a big problem with this. What would have happened if I didn't tell you this? What would have happened if I just gave you the function, didn't tell you one of its zeros, and said, go find them? Because normally when you're solving an equation, I don't tell you, by the way, here's one of the answers. Do you see the problem of not telling you one of the zeros? If I don't tell you the zero, one of the zeros, then I don't tell you any of this, which means you don't have a box number. And if you don't have a box number, how can you set off the synthetic division? So here's the cliffhanger and something to, to try to look out for. And this is what the next homework is going to be about. If you are finding zeros of a polynomial function and you are not told what one of them is in advance so that you can turn it into a divisor and find the other factor using synthetic division, there are still hints embedded in the function itself. My challenge to you between now and the next series of videos 
where oh where in the original function are all three of these hiding? I love a good cliffhanger. All right, you got any questions? Let me know. By the way, you can see where these guys are embedded by retracing the steps upward, but we'll talk about that later.